Collision, how are you guys? I'm still missing you, um, but I'm super excited to see you in person someday soon. Until that time, I thought it'd be a really good idea for us to look in the scriptures at how Jesus dealt with a bunch of things that we're dealing with. Um, so one of the things that you might be dealing with right now are solitude, being still, maybe potentially even battling loneliness. Um, and often in the scriptures, we see Jesus modeling this holy solitude. And not only this holy solitude, but it's not something that was forced on him, right? Sometimes Jesus even chose solitude. He chose alone time with the Father. Um, and so today we're going to talk about solitude, um, alone time with God, stillness before God. And we're going to look at two different examples of Jesus choosing solitude. Um, one time, we're going to see Jesus choosing solitude before he goes out to preach. Before he goes and does ministry, he decides to refuel, refocus, and spend time alone with the Father. And then we're also going to see Jesus choosing solitude after something. After he's performed a great miracle, he retreats, he spends time alone, in the quiet, with his Father. Jesus saw great value in spending time alone in prayer and in quiet, in stillness before the Lord. And so I'm going to go ahead and read these two to us. Um, and then we're going to look at some things that it, it tells us about solitude and silence and stillness. Okay? Um, so before I do that, we're going to pray together. Father God, thank you um, for being present with us. Um, even when we decide um, to choose solitude, even then, we are not alone because you are always with us. You've promised your presence to us. Um, you've promised to never leave us, to never forsake us, Father. And so we can trust that. And I pray that as we look in the scriptures now, um, as we look at Jesus' example of stillness before you, that we would learn ourselves um, some things that we can, we can get from being still before your presence. Um, so I ask your blessing over us now as we look in the scriptures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, so like I said, we're going to be looking in two places. So the first place we're going to look is in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 35 through 39. So here we see Jesus. He's about to go and preach all throughout Galilee, okay? Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so that I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. So what do we see in this first passage? We see that before Jesus did ministry, he went to be alone with his father. It says he was very intentional, right? He got up very early in the morning while it was still dark. He got up. He left the house and he went to a solitary place. He went to a place where he could be totally alone with no distractions, with no other people, just to be alone with his father. And it says where he prayed. So he went to be alone to pray with his father. And then it says when his friends came to get him, he's like, dude, where have you been? We got work to do. He's like, let's go. That's exactly why I came. I know my purpose. But first I had to spend time with my father. So that's the first passage we look at. The second passage we're going to look at is in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5. Um, and we're going to start in verse 16 here. And we see a healing happening. Oh, I'm sorry, we're not going to start in verse 16. We're going to end in verse 16. Verse 12. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. When Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priests and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. So here we see a second example of Jesus choosing solitude, right? And this is after Jesus has performed a miracle, he went to be alone with his father. What do we notice in this passage? I notice a few things. It says Jesus often withdrew. Um, often, 
implies that this happened over and over again. Many times in Jesus' ministry, he often decided to withdraw. And withdraw is an active thing. He had to make a choice, he had to get up, and he had to leave a place where he was to be alone. And it said he went to lonely places and he prayed. I think of this as Jesus offering back to God the thanks that he deserves for working a miracle through him. Jesus has just done a great thing and it says crowds of people came to hear, hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. So tons of people are giving Jesus attention. And what does he do? Instead of soaking up that attention, he's like, I'm gonna go and be alone with my father. I'm gonna pray to him. I'm gonna hang out with him. I'm gonna refuel, refresh. So what do we see in all of these passages? What does it have for us? Stillness with God does not mean inactivity. It doesn't mean that we do nothing. It actually means the opposite, right? We're told to pursue peace, to pursue stillness. It takes pursuit to be still with God. It says that Jesus got up. It says that Jesus withdrew. It takes effort and discipline to wait on God. What does God have for you? What does he want to teach you in times of solitude and in his presence alone? To expect him. And it also takes making a choice, a choice to be present with God without any distractions. I challenge you, put your phone away for 15, 20 minutes. Pull out your Bible, grab a piece of paper and a pen, and just talk to him. See what he has to tell you. Choose to be present with God. In stillness and solitude, God has great benefits for us, right? It could be restful. It can be refreshing. Being still with God can help you refocus and refuel. Before Jesus went and did more miracles, before Jesus went and did ministry, he took time to refuel with the Father, to fill his own spirit so that he could have something to share with everyone else. God strengthens us in stillness. He reveals himself. He examines us and he lovingly disciplines us and corrects our behavior and our thoughts. He comforts us with his own presence. So in the next few weeks, we're gonna look at several other passages where Jesus was either forced into isolation and loneliness, or he chose stillness and solitude with the Father. And we're gonna talk about what that means to us. My challenge to you this week is to take some time to be still with God. Rid yourself of distractions and sit still in his presence. My other challenge for you is don't waste your solitude. God has incredible benefits for you in stillness. It's a time to be present with him. It's a time to pray. And it's a time to prepare. Let's pray together. Lord God, we are so grateful for the example of Jesus. How before and after he did anything, Lord God, he took time to withdraw, to retreat, and to spend time with you. And I pray, Father, that we would desire the same things and that also, God, in the stillness, in the solitude, that you would teach us, that you would show us something, that you would reveal yourself, that you would comfort us with your presence, that you would strengthen us with your word. God, we need you when we're with others and we feel lonely. We need you when we're alone and we feel lonely. We need you at all times. So thank you for being a God who promises his presence to us. It's in that love and your presence that we do stand and that we do pray. Amen. See you guys.